Hey everyone, we are here today checking out a dryer. This dryer, nothing happens when you push power. You can hear the timer going. I've tried it on the different cycles and it is advancing as far as the timer goes. So we know that that part is okay. So the start button could be shorted out. It could be the thermal cutoff fuse, uh, blue from a faulty uh, high limit thermostat. We're checking this all out. So the first thing to do is to make sure that your dryer is unplugged from the wall before you proceed. You can sometimes get by without disconnecting the dryer vent. Other times you may have to take it off to be able to get this back panel off. It's real simple to take this off. It's just usually a few screws here that is covering up the cord panel and then all around the perimeter of the panel. So go ahead and take those off. The edges of this are a stamped, uh, machine stamped. It can have sharp edges, so you may want to wear some leather gloves to protect your fingers. It's normally a six millimeter nut driver. If you take a screwdriver with a removable end, that's usually the right size for a good fit to take these off. And they generally come off pretty simple. So anytime you have a blown high limit thermostat and need to do any kind of service to your dryer, this is a normal maintenance that should be done on your dryer at least once a year anyway. Uh, take this back panel off, vacuum it on both sides to make sure that these uh, air vents are not clogged. A lot of times they are filled right up. Check your dryer vent going to the outside of the house right up there and check the vent on the outside to make sure that the flap is opening, that there's not a bird's nest or any kind of obstruction up there. And check in here also. This is getting into your blower wheel housing. And to be able to take this off to clean it, you have to make sure this is a top lint dryer clean out. Pull that out and set it aside. Magnetic trays work really great for these little screws so you don't lose them as well and again watching your fingers so here's your thermal fuse and your high li limit uh, cutoff you can check these with a multimeter and if you get a reading of infinity it's saying that it's working anything else it's not so usually what happens is something went wrong uh, blocking the inside of the dryer Different little materials could fall down in there and block the blower wheel from going and basically let the dryer get too hot. Then it stops and sends this to shut off so that you don't have a house fire. House fires do happen because a lot of times this cabinet down here gets an excessive amount of lint built up in it, dust, cobwebs, and needs to be cleaned. Now this dryer was serviced not that long ago and if we were getting into like a heater element, then we're looking into this situation here. So today we're just gonna take these out and test them. This is a simple multimeter and this is an analog version. When you touch these probes to anything, um, this needle will go all the way to the end and that like upside down horseshoe there is your symbol for infinity. Try to get it to focus right there. And then any other reading would prove that these are not working. So I've got it set on ohms down here at the bottom. And that's the thing that I didn't like about the digital uh, multimeters when we got into this, you get all kinds of readings. Now I always swap these so that you can see if you're getting anything at all with either the red or the black on either probe. It never really seems to make a difference that way. So you can see we have no reading here. And if I had better light, you would see there's actual some discoloration on these probes right here. There's uh, brass gold colored connectors sticking out and that's what you're putting the probes on. They're a little dark at both ends. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that out um, for whatever reason. It's probably your thermal fuse. Uh, this is the high limit cutoff that shuts the dryer down. So it happens because something is wrong with this or blocking the dryer. So just go ahead, save yourself the time of having the down dryer and spend the extra 10 or $20 to have this replaced because otherwise it's just going to blow that right out again. So with the same nut driver, we're going to go ahead and disconnect that. We're using needle nose pliers to pull off 
any of our connectors, take a picture or make a note to yourself to where um, each wire is connected. On mine, I've got red and white on the bottom, red on the top, and purple going into the right and left in the center. So now with that harness pushed aside, you can see a little bit better what's going on here. And we can test this as well and see what it is reading. I do make these with clips so it's a little easier to handle one-handed. So right here I've got no reading. And right there I actually have some reading but it's not going to infinity um, which it should be. It's only showing me at uh, 50 ohms. So we want to go ahead and swap that out. So to remove the high limit thermostat, you just remove the screw and wiggle this right out of its fitting. Same thing here, remove the screw, it slides up and out. And that is what it looks like on the inside. And you can see it has collected some dirt and dust, but other than that, it's done its job. See right there, you can see those burnt edges? That was the telltale before testing it that it was bad. So real quick, I'm just gonna address that this vent pipe was crushed. See, that's a soft aluminum. The rigid pipe ones are really great for this because that's not gonna happen. With some cleaning, this got pushed back too far against this pipe, created a constriction right there and any excess lint was kind of building up in that spot. I took it all out, I cleaned it, I shook it out. There was a good amount in there, but not so much that it was gonna be a huge problem. So right up close, here's our opening so that you can see. And here are our new replacement parts. This set came as a pair off of eBay for just under $9. Through other websites, just this piece is roughly $20 to $25. In this one, anywhere from $12 to $15. So this was a great savings. Um, the only difference is this does not say FSP or factory certified parts. We're just trying to get things going. They basically are all made in the same places, same specs, and have the same numbers. You just wanna make sure that your voltage and your amps are a match and we are good to go. So we're just gonna get this hooked back up. So a little fire safety tip for you is to take this back cover off, take this panel out, clean the blower wheel, the housing, clean the inside of the cabinet to reduce risk of fire. Okay, so this just goes in this little slot, prongs facing out for hooking up, and there is a little slot at the bottom that will help you hold it in place. And we're just going to take the short screw that was provided, our nut driver, I'm I apologize, I know my hands are in the way. And now we're just gonna do the same thing with the high limit thermostat. All right, just like that, that part's installed and we will connect the corresponding wires. Now a little tip for you for homeowners and handymen alike, take a picture or make a little video clip so that you know which wires go to which prongs because it really is helpful in the end and saves time. Um, then you don't have to put it together, find out that it was wrong, take it apart and redo it. So while we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and dust off these contacts here and make sure that that is clean and good and we will button everything back up. And like I said, this is where you're gonna to wanna to do your test to make sure that it is going to work. Now, I'm sure you probably could put the back panel on with it plugged in, but for safety, we always unplug it. Anytime we are working with a screwdriver, 
just to make sure that we are properly protected, not having to worry about a safety ground, and that we're not going to get electrocuted. So as I mentioned before, make sure that you have cleaned the cabinet out and dusted it. Make sure that you clean this back panel and that it is ready to be put back into use. And I find that it is very helpful to start right here in the middle to hold the whole panel up straight. And then, of course, moving to the outside. And then, of course, moving to the outside, making sure that you have all of your main corners lined up. It can be hard to get these on square sometimes. Invariably, we are always missing a screw here or there. I believe these are number eight size screws. But in general, I make sure that the sides are always buttoned up. And if you have to leave a screw, you can leave one at the top. And of course, not forgetting that we need to hook back up our dryer vent and retighten that with this ridiculously short screwdriver that I bought just for this job because it couldn't be more perfect. All right, that's nice and snug and we can push it back up into the position that it is supposed to be. So as you can see, this is an older Whirlpool standard washer and dryer set. Top loading washer, front loading dryer. I got this washing machine it used for my mom when she had moved away up north and it has been in this house for probably eight to 10 years and been virtually maintenance free. The dryer itself, this is the first time I've ever had an issue with it at all. So for $8, I was able to fix this dryer, which was caused by my own stupidity when I pulled everything out to vacuum and clean and shoved it back too far. I never thought to look behind it for the clearance. My drain pipe that goes right here behind the washing machine is running down low and behind the dryer. So if you can avoid these soft, flexible aluminum dryer vents and go with the rigid duct type, you'll be much better off. And this is like what I'm talking about. For a dryer, it's probably roughly four inches, maybe three inches. And this is heat ducting um, that is probably like six to eight inches. I'm sure you can pick up any of the dryer venting on Amazon, at any supply shop, any big box store, and get right back into business. But eBay was what I needed for this. You can always go to appliancepartspro.com, Sears Parts Direct. It is a great source for finding what you need. Thanks for watching, everybody. If this video was helpful to you and saved you money, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll find out when the next video comes out. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.